Welcome again, everyone, to G Squared Academy, where you know excellence is, as usual, epitomized. We try to simplify things. We try to make sure you guys understand what exactly you're trying to do in your sciences, especially chemistry over here, you know? Thank you, everyone, for liking my videos, watching the videos, sharing the videos, subscribing to the channel. You know, thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. And I hope that these videos have been helping you guys. You know, anyway. We're going to press on still. So today, as you can see, we're going to look at how to write up a the implementation for the CXC and for CAPE. Just a little bit of introduction. Well, you know that CXC has come up with this thing where you're supposed to write an implementation lab. First of all, you write a proposal, which is in the form of a PD lab. Then you write, you carry out the proposal. Then you write a report on um, the execution of the proposal. The, the, um, the report which you write, we call the implementation, which is what I'm going to be looking at today. A lot of students have difficulty with it because they're not clear as to how to write it up, what to do, you know, and I just want to make this video to help those people who need that sort of help. So it's based on that. So for example, you propose that SARL may be used as an indicator, you carry out the investigation, you write the report. The report is what we're looking at, how to write up that report. All right. So as usual, you must have standard headings. Standard headings are needed. Don't think that because it's an implementation or in the, re the report, the mark scheme, it doesn't give you the headings that you shouldn't have them. You need still need to have those headings. You know? So you still need your name and your date and aim and lab number, etc., etc. Notice here that, um, where's my cursor? There you go. Notice here that um, marked out a 20, the implementation is a heavy lab. So you need to be very careful with it. Make sure you do it properly. And this lab is always used as a party grade. You know, sometimes there are some labs which are not used as a party grade, but this one is always used. They need to be very careful and make sure you do it well. All right, so you have your standard headings. After you have your standard headings now, you move into the method. All you need to do for the method is change the tense to past tense from the proposal. So you look at your proposal, you change the tense to past tense. You're good to go there. So the next thing, that's one mark. Next thing you need to do is that you need to make sure that your proposal, your method is linked to your proposal. So for example, let's say you decided to test if hand sanitizer kills microbes, right? That's what you did it, you were thinking of doing. And then you changed your mind in in um fourth form fifth form sorry and you say you know you say okay now i'm gonna do something else now because that doesn't interest me anymore what was gonna happen is that your method in your implementation will be different from your proposal as a result of that you're gonna lose one mark just letting you know that once it doesn't match the proposal it you're gonna lose one mark for that all right so it's best if you try to stick to one thing so get something that you really really like you stick to that one thing and carry it through because you're going to lose one mark. In your mind, you might say, hey, it's just one mark. But trust me, when you have like 79% and you want one mark to make it 80%, of course, and give you a one versus a two, one, become, one mark becomes very important. So try to stick to that. And so that's your method. After your method, now you have your results. Pretty straightforward stuff. What you found out. What did you observe? What did I find out? What did I hear? What did I see? What did I do? And generally speaking, a table is best to record your results. Right? Tables are just easy to understand. They're easy to follow, etc. etc. So therefore, it's best if you do a table. 2021 now, so you may want to use pictures as well. You may have done a lab where, for example, you want to see microbial growth. You may not want to count the microbe. So what you do is you take pictures of your results here before and after and you show what it looks like before and after the experiment, of course. And it's clear. It's clear what your results are because you can see it. You can see the evidence of it right there. And of course, it makes your report look quite colorful. So therefore, I would say if you can take pictures, take pictures. It's always good to have it. All right. Now, after your results, you need your data analysis. Once you've got these results, you need to... Put them in a, such a way that somebody can understand them. Okay, and this is of course your data analysis. Now, if you have a lot of data, you may want to do a graph. Graphs 
as just like tables are easy to follow it may be difficult for you to plot the graph but once you have done the graph then it's easy for people to understand the trends in the graph etc etc okay and you do a sample calculation some other thing you can do in your data analysis now let's say for example you were measuring the conductance of a number of electrolytes gatorade leucozid um bull um whatever the case might be monster energy drink red bull etc okay um you and you have to calculate the conductance based on measurements you had it's it's not too advisable i would say that you do the conductance calculations for all of the samples what you'd need to do is just say hey here is the calculation for red bull and it's the same calculation i used to get the values for the other samples so you show that one sample calculation and then you do the others on rough paper and you put the values in your table okay and that is your data analysis you don't have to do all the calculations you just need to do a sample calculation all right so after that now after you have done your lab um got your results done data analysis on the results you now need to explain the results and this is your discussion and big thing here do not restate the results in your discussion it's a discussion it's not an observation or it's not a result a discussion of course you are going to tell what your results mean okay explain um what you found out to someone was there any trend did i pick up on any trend in this state the trend and you could actually propose a reason for the trend notice i said propose and not necessarily tell exactly the purpose the reason for the trend because you can propose things and it's not necessarily true or you can say something and it's not necessarily true was a reason for the trend, right? Did the results match your hypothesis? Was it the same as what you predicted? And if it did not, say why you think it didn't match it up. You know, propose something. Why you think that's the case? I tell you, if you do these things, then I I can guarantee you, you'll be getting those five marks. Okay, once you do it um, properly and you write clearly, etc. Um, grammatically, as using um, proper scientific jargon all right then after your discussion it's your reflection this is your section of the report this is where the examiner wants to hear your views your opinions okay cx is very clear as to how they want your reflection done they don't want anything weird they just want specific things and here is um what they are looking for they're looking for a relevance between the experiment and real life because to be honest CXC really wanted to see what ideas young people could generate to solve the world's problems. So they came up with this project that students could work on something that, you know, maybe one out of everybody could come up with a critical project that affects life. We know it's difficult because of resources, etc. But this was the premise. So we want to see, they want to see the relevance between the experiment and real life, society, the environment, etc. Is it good? Is it a project that will help the environment? Will it help people in society? What's the impact of the knowledge you gain on yourself? Not on anyone, anyone else. How did it affect you? How did it impact your life? You know, state that and you get your one mark for that. Did you make any changes to your method or your procedure or the experiment at, on a whole? What did you change? Why did you change it? Well, you know, sir, I started out with 50 mils in my proposal of electrolyte to test my voltage and stuff. But then I realized 50 mils was just too much. So I changed it to 5 mils just to save on the resources, the materials. Okay, so you justify why um, you made a change. If you did not make a change, then you write a statement, something to the effect of the experiment was carried out as planned. That tells the experimenter that you made no changes at all. Okay. Then, of course, you have your communication of information. A lot of people think that science doesn't really deal with language and your English doesn't have to be good and your grammar doesn't have to be good, but it needs to be because we are communicating information and grammar affects communication. Okay. So, therefore, your grammar is marked for your scientific language, your clarity, etc. So, that is where. Um, you're gonna lose marks or gain marks, but you shouldn't lose marks for the the next the um the marks up here. Be sure about that. All right, so that's your reflection. 
your opinion on the matter. After your reflection now, we go to your limitations. All right, and these limitations can be taken from your proposal. Once you write up your proposal, which is the form in the form of a planning and designing, if you need help with your writing up a planning and designing lab, I'm gonna place the link up right up your top right um, in this video. So you can click on that and watch how to write up a planning and designing lab. Okay. So once you have written these things properly, you can get them from the lab, from that proposal. Okay. They have divided your limitations into three categories, precautions, um, limitations, and sources of errors. As you can see on the screen, your precautions, step you take to prevent errors. Your limitations, anything which affects your result that you cannot control. There's nothing you can do about it. And then now your source of error, um, something that the experimenter may have done that will cause errors in the results. Okay, so, um, you know, when you wrote the proposal, to be honest, you are writing something from a theoretical point of view. You're writing what you may encounter as precaution, as limitation, as source of error. However, when you conducted the experiment now, you were actually in the field, so to speak. So you would know what would have limited your getting proper results, or you'd know what sort of errors you could have made in the experiment if you made any errors. And you know what sort of precautions you need to take while doing this experiment, because you actually did it. So you know what you need to do to prevent errors and to protect yourself as well. I should say that precautions also help to protect the experimenter. It's not just about getting good results about protecting yourself as well all right so those three things and you get three marks for this once you have all three of them three marks and you're good to go the final thing now as the bird flies away is the conclusion the conclusion and for your conclusion you state clearly what you found out what did i find out of course you're not going to use any pronouns right so you state what you found out and I should say that again, you should not use pronouns in your report at all, even in the reflection, I believe. You still need to state it in such a way um, that you don't use pronouns, okay? So you state clearly what you found out, all right? Do not give your opinion. Your opinion, science really doesn't look for your opinion. Science wants facts, okay? What did you find out? Where's the evidence of this? Okay, and as I said that, you should not use why or because these because why and because means that you're going to explain something your conclusion is not an explanation you have already done your discussion you're simply stating what you found out so one or two sentences for a conclusion will suffice should be enough this is what i found out in a one or two sentences okay and there you have it there you have it friends all right i hope you guys found this video helpful i hope it will help you and then please like it share it with your friends subscribe to my channel g squared academy where excellence is epitomized and i hope it will help you to get those good grades in your sbas so you can get your one with your distinction thank you guys for watching and all the best in your exams in your lab reports see you soon